Hello! In this video you are going to see some of the unbelievable properties of plastics from everyday life. One of the reasons plastics have become such a prominent part in everyday life is because they are made of gigantic molecules that give them their unique properties. For example, this rubber band is only made up of a single polymer molecule. Now, one rubber band alone is certainly not able to exert a lot of force. But if we use a whole lot of rubber bands at once, watch what happens to this watermelon. I just had to put around 200 rubber bands on this melon and this happened. <laughs> this experiment is popular for a reason and even has its own Wikipedia article. It shows how many small things combined can cause a very dramatic effect if they are focused on a single thing. This also shows an important point about the science of plastics, how many polymer molecules combined are able to exert a lot of force. To show you precisely what I mean with that, let's compare the properties of candle wax and polyethylene. Polyethylene is one of the most common plastics used in packaging and it's chemically very similar to candle wax. They both consist out of mostly linear hydrocarbon molecules, however the molecules of polyethylene are a lot longer. If I create a relatively thin layer of candle wax by pouring it on a flat surface, we get this very brittle and unstable plate that I can easily destroy with my hand. When I try to destroy a plastic bag, made from polyethylene, it is actually very difficult and I have a tough time tearing it apart. This is even though the plastic bag is a lot thinner. That is because the very long chains of polyethylene are all entangled with each other. So all the polymer molecules together are able to create a lot of force, just like the rubber bands with the watermelon. The long polyethylene chains also form crystallites, as shown in the graphic, that further holds the material together. Now if we melt some polyethylene and some candle wax, we can see that the candle wax forms a rather thin liquid that I can easily pour from one container to another. The polyethylene on the other hand forms this rather viscous goo that you can't pour. This is rather difficult to work with. If we let the liquids cool down again, you can see the wax contracting a lot. The polyethylene wants to do the same, but can't because the molecules are so entangled. So at the end, the glass has to give in. Another experiment that shows the large size of the molecules is when you try to boil polyethylene and candle wax in a test tube. The polyethylene chars because the molecules are so large they can't go in the gas phase so they get torn apart but the wax just boils regularly. Let's extinguish it in some water before I set everything else on fire. Oops. Another way to illustrate the insane tear resistance of plastics is by filling some liquefied gases into a plastic bottle. For example, liquid butane with a vapor pressure of two bars is usually stored into some metal cartridges but the plastic bottle will hold it just as well. That is no surprise because in a regular soft drink bottle the pressure is around 4 bars so storing butane in there is absolutely no problem. You could also store liquid propane in there which is usually stored in containers made out of thick steel. This has a vapor pressure of roughly 8 bars which the bottle can still handle. However, this is getting close to the limit of 10 bars and if we heat the propane bottle a little bit with an open flame, you can see why it might not be the best idea to put liquid propane in PET plastic bottles. Please don't try any of this at home.
The fact that the molecules are so entangled can also be demonstrated with this rather curious demonstration. The fact that the molecules are thoroughly entangled with each other can also be demonstrated with this rather curious demonstration of this self-pouring liquid. This is polyethylene oxide with a molecular weight of about 4 million. For comparison, the molecular weight of water is 18. However, that means that one molecule of this polyethylene oxide is about 0.035 mm long. That's about the width of a very thin human hair. That doesn't seem like much, but for a molecule in solution that's a gigantic size. Water molecules are more than 100,000 times smaller than that. That is why the molecules all get entangled and the liquid keeps pouring out of the container even though the glass is no longer tilted. Speaking of glass, did you know that plastics can also behave like glass? For example, this rubber glove is very elastic at room temperature. But if I fill it with some liquid air to cool it down to about negative 200 degrees Celsius, you can see that it becomes very brittle like a piece of glass. That is because at room temperature the long molecules can move around to some extent, but at a certain temperature they get stuck. This is also known as the glass transition temperature. There are also plastics where the glass transition temperature is above room temperature, for example with plexiglass and polystyrene. When I hit this polystyrene bowl with a hammer, it shatters similarly to how a glass bowl would. The same applies for this piece of plexiglass, but only when I hit it with an axe. The plastics, however, are quite a bit more resistant to cracking than regular glass. One last impressive property of plastics is their very high corrosion resistance. This application can be demonstrated in a very impressive way by using two coke cans. If you scrape off the outer label, release the pressure and then put one can in hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, and the other in sodium hydroxide, a strong base, they should be slowly dissolving. In my case this didn't work because they were made out of iron, so I had to improvise with some other soda cans, but then they dissolved very nicely. However, they don't completely dissolve and we can see a transparent layer of plastic remaining. That is to protect the aluminum from which the cans are made of from the acid contained in the coke. If you throw some aluminum foil into some coke, you can see that after a couple of days, some of it has dissolved. The coke has also become quite cloudy because of the dissolved aluminum. So without the plastic in the can, the coke would slowly dissolve the aluminum, which certainly wouldn't be ideal. And you can also see that the plastic survived both the strong acid and the strong base. That is why strong acids and strong bases are often stored in plastic containers. They don't break as easily as glass does, they have a lower weight and the resistance to corrosion is very high. This was part 1 of my series on plastics, so if you want to see more make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it. There are many even more spectacular experiments coming. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, thanks to Ricarda for doing the editing again and thanks to you for watching.